Hey, I'm Alejandro Duarte with MariaDB, and in the previous videos of this series, we learned the basics of JDBC. We learned how to establish a connection with a database, how to perform all the CRUD operations against it, but we were using the JDBC driver to get the connections, and that's probably not the best thing to do when you have things such as, uh, I don't know, a uh, web service or a web application in general. Um, in these cases, what you will end up having is a, a number of users requesting your um, application functionality. And this functionality includes requests to the database. So for that, you need a connection. And if you only have a one connection object, it could happen that user B has to wait until user A uh, is done with all the uh, processing. So that's not the best um, way to deal with connections. What you should do is to have a bunch of connection objects ready in something called a connection pool. And so that's what we are going to learn in this video. Let's get started. And so one of the cool things about um, connection pools is that it's such a common pattern that they are implemented. There are several implementations that are actually very, very good. Uh, one that is very, very famous is the Hickory, Hickory CP um, connection pool. Hickory means light in Japanese. I know because I just Googled it before recording the video. <laughs> anyway, so for that, we obviously need the dependency. So we're gonna copy that from here, go to the pom.xml and paste it in the um, dependencies section. Now, um, Hikari uses uh, SLF4J, which is a um, logging facade for other logging frameworks. And it has the ability to connect to, I'm trying to find the documentation, to several logging frameworks like uh, log4j, or log back, and those are called bindings. So we need to pick one. And um, you know what? I'm gonna use just this one, which is the simple. This is an example application, so this would work. But pick the one you want. And I know that here it's uh, well, Maven repository.com. That's fine. I know that with this version of of Hikari, I need to use this version of SLF4J. Simple. So let's add it here, but it had this test scope. No, I don't need that. Let's reload the Maven project so that, so that it downloads the dependency and we can use it. And yeah, now we are ready. So what's the problem here? Um, the open database connection, let me show you, it's using the driver manager to get the connection. Instead of that, what we want is not to expose a connection object here directly, but Every operation will have to get its own connection from where? From a pool. And a pool is encapsulated in something called a data source that Hikari implements. Let me see if this works. Hikari. Oh, all right. So it's not, it's not working. But maybe if I just uh, rebuild the project, it would work. Let's see. Of course, I have, I have, um, I have um, completion errors. Let me redo that. Let's see if it works now. Hickory. I don't know. IntelliJ idea is funny sometimes. So let's just um, <laughs> let's just uh, restart the ID. Um, if this doesn't work, then I'll figure it out. Don't worry. Uh, this is good that these kind of things happen because you learn something new, I believe. Um, what were we doing? Oh, well, we were trying to use Hikari. Come on, give me the, the class. There we go. Now it's working. So yeah, restarting the, restarting the ID solved the problem. Private this connection source, let's call it just, uh, not connection source, but data source. We're not going to instantiate that here, but in the open database connection, which is not open database connection anymore, it's more like init database connection pool. 
right? And close database connection. It's not really closing the database connection. It's maybe closing database connection uh, pool. Yeah, that should be more clear now. So let's jump inside this method here. And oh, let me actually remove the connection object because we are not going to, going to use this. Let's remove it. We will get a bunch of errors here everywhere because we're using that object everywhere. So instead of that, we need to get the connection from somewhere else. And you know what? Because um, I have this kind of log here saying connecting to the database and all that. Uh, we don't need that because we added the uh, um, SLF4J binding. So maybe we can get rid of these and even these as well. And so how can we get the connection then? Mm. Or actually, how can we init the database connection pool? So first we need to create, or oh, well, we need to assign that to data source. Was it data source? Let me check. Data source, yeah, private. It should be static, and that's the problem. Because this is static, and this is static. So data source is gonna be a new Hikari data source, and we can configure this thing here. So first we need to set the JDBC URL. Remember that we did this in the first video? So let's cut that, put it here. That's gonna be the location of our database. Then we need to set probably the username and we also need to set the password. There we go. And we don't need this at all, really. That's it. So with this we have the um, database connection pool. We don't need this either. Now, how about closing the database connection pool? We don't need this. Uh, we don't need that. We don't need this. So instead of saying connection, we say data source dot close. And this is closing the database connection pool. Now, again, we don't need those uh, system out print line kind of log statements that I added everywhere here. Because uh, Hikari is going to do it properly with a proper logging framework. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's on the establishing or in initializing the database connection pool. How about the rest of the methods? So how can we get a connection object now? We get it from, can I do that? Um, let's do it right here. Uh, we get it from the data source and it's called get connection. Obviously, right? But once we are done with the connection, we need to close it. Remember that? It's a resource and we need to close. And it, it's an auto-closable thing. So we can simply use the try with resources uh, block. And it's going to be always closed. Java is going to uh, take care of that. So now we have the connection object and everything. It's, it's the same as, as before. Check out the other videos if you want to learn how um, this code works, but now we need to fix everything here. So it's kind of uh, the same. We just say data source, get connection. We assign that and then we just uh, use the uh, with resources, um, with resources block. And because I'm very, very lazy, I just copied that so I can just uh, do it here. I'm so lazy that I'm even going to copy this semicolon. <laughs> and um, maybe this I'll do manually so that it formats the code. Uh, there we go. So I'm just repeating the same for every, um, in every usage of the connection, the previous connection object. Now it's local to each, um, to each method. Let me just check that I didn't miss anything. Well, I will have something right here, which I didn't have, so I guess I didn't. Let's run this and check that it works. So here we go. So this thing, it's the uh, the logging, right? So Hikari is saying I'm starting, then added a connection and then uh, start completed and the same at the end. So shut down, completed. And it seems like everything works, right? So for example, the update is working and, and deleting data is working. Uh, no errors. So it's very good. Now it's this is using a connection pool, but what's the actual point of this? 
Uh, in this case, to be honest, there is no point in it because this is only one one thread all the time. Every time we execute this application, it's going to be one thread. There is no, there are no several users uh, requesting in different separate threads each of these CRUD operations, create, read, update, uh, and delete, right? But if it, this was a web service, right? If this class wasn't, it, it didn't have this main method and instead was deployed to some kind of a uh, web application um, and it was exposed as a web service, a REST web service maybe, and then uh, a front end or an external system can request these methods but it could be many users actually, if it's a web application. Uh, so from the browser, it's requesting the create data and read data many times uh, concurrently because there are many users, right? So for each user, uh, if we don't use a database connection pool, it will have to use only one connection. And so if let's say someone is here doing this um, insert and this, this logic could be uh, uh, rather complex and could take more time. And even if not, it's going to take some time anyway. And another user, maybe it's here waiting for that connection to, to, to be uh, freed from here so that I can run a select, right? And that's, that's not the best way to do it. Now, each of these two users will get their own connection object from a, um, from a connection pool. And this, this pool, kind of initializes so that it creates a bunch of connections that are ready. It's established with the database and I only have to lend it to these, to these guys over here and they will return it when they close the connection. And we're closing the connection because we have the try with resources block. So it's going to call the um, connection.close close method, which means that it's going to return the connection again to the, uh, to the, um, database pool. So I think that concludes this video and this series. I hope you like it. Let me know if you have any, any questions about it or if you have any suggestions on what to cover in future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.